Thank you. Yesterday, of course, was uh, our, uh, an event. Our country observed the uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and since, of course, we were not in session and uh, we're here today, um, it's appropriate to think, to give some time to think about King, about his legacy, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak, Mr. President. To, to really honor Martin Luther King, uh, to honor his legacy, it's important to celebrate the progress we've made in the civil rights movement uh, that he made possible. But it's also important to come to terms with the full truth of our nation's history by recognizing the inequalities that existed in the past and those that still exist today. There's so much to learn from Martin Luther King that we have all have a responsibility to uh, make the world a better place, that uh, it could be done nonviolently and uh, with a respect for all humanity. There are so many important things that are occurring right now in our country and to solve the problems, we really must try to understand them. Such as the protests that we've, um, we've seen lately, the police brutality uh, in, in some of our cities, the removal of the Confederate statues and the flags from our public places, the racially charged comments that were made or not made by our leaders, the physical and sexual harassment and abuse and retaliation. To really understand all that is going on, we must know more and we must acknowledge with our eyes wide open, if we can understand the fundamental ideas of inequality, if we can acknowledge the past, then we can hopefully make better choices to improve our future. Martin Luther King Day has become a day to promote equal rights for all Americans, whatever the background. His words, free at last, free at last, were addressed to people of all faiths, of all colors, of all persuasions. He knew we were all in need in some way of being liberated from the past, which has held all of us back in one way or another. It, it almost seems, Mr. President, as, as King is speaking, as, as Martin Luther King spoke to the problems uh, that he faced then, that they are problems we face today. The senseless conflict in Charlottesville and other cities, the abuse of power and sexual misconduct that we see in our entertainment industry, in business and political world, and, and even here in the Alaska legislature, and the powerful response of the Me Too movement. King seems to be like a voice in the wilderness when he says, and, and I ask permission, Mr. President, uh, to speak uh, very briefly uh, some of his comments, some of his very, very brief quotes. He said, we must meet hate with love. We must meet physical force with soul force. There is still a voice crying out through the vista of time saying, love your enemies, bless them that, you, that curse you, pray for them that despitefully use you. And remembering that he was a minister, he said, God is not interested merely in freeing black men and brown men and yellow men, but God is interested in freeing the whole human race. And finally he said, I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. That is why right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. The national holiday honors the courage of a man who endured harassment and threats and beatings and even bombings. He went to jail 29 times to achieve freedom for others. He knew he would pay the ultimate price for his leadership but he kept on marching and he kept on protesting and he kept on organizing anyway. King is now dead longer than he lived, but he lived a truly extraordinary American life. At the age of 33, he spoke to John F. Kennedy, President Kennedy, about civil rights. At 34, he delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. At 35, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. At 39, his life was ended. His assassination was almost 50 years ago, actually on April 4th this year, it will be exactly 50 years ago. He left a legacy of hope and inspiration that continues today. He said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. King is widely seen as America's greatest advocate of nonviolence. He was inspired by his faith and by the teachings of Gandhi. He led the nonviolent movement during the 50s and 60s for legal equality for African Americans. Others uh, in that movement were willing to do anything to achieve freedom, including violence, and we see that even today, don't we? 
But King used the power of words when he said, we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. He used the power of words, nonviolence, and civil disobedience to achieve goals that really today seem virtually impossible at that time. Through his example, King taught Americans truly timeless values, the values of courage, truth, justice, compassion, dignity, humility, and service. Though his holiday was yesterday, we should never forget that it commemorates a universal, unconditional love, forgiveness, and nonviolence that empowered his life and his spirit. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator.